So let's talk about this next setting. Uh, and, and really, I think we're talking about these patients now, which I believe all of us are seeing more and more frequently, are the patients that are presenting with metastatic disease newly diagnosed. You know, we know over the past few years, I think partly due to this preventive services task force recommendation of a D with PSA that has obviously now changed, we're, we were seeing, especially in the urology office, patients coming in, not having been PSA screened, higher Gleason patterns, and have metastatic disease. And obviously they've not been uh, hormonally treated up until this point. So fortunately, we know over the past few years, there have been a number of trials that have addressed how these patients should be initially treated. So Dan, can you, walk, you know, sort of walk us through over the past couple of years, Stampede, Charted, Got to those types of things, kind of in summary. Yeah, sure, sure, I'm happy to, Raul. So, so this field really started, I think, you know, back in 2004, 2005, following the approval of docetaxel for treatment of metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer. And really, Chris Sweeney deserves a lot of credit at that time for recognizing, okay, we need to see if we can do better with this agent using it in an earlier disease setting. And, and part of uh, ECOG and, and working through the cooperative groups, you know, really kind of a labor of love developing and convincing people this was an important study to do. Recognize, recognizing this hormone-sensitive metastatic disease disease state as potentially a different biology than sort of the natural progression that we've outlined from radical prostatectomy or radiation to PSA relapse to hormonal therapy, recognizing that patients that are kind of de novo coming in the door with metastatic disease may have a more aggressive biology and benefit from that more accelerated uh, use, early use of com combination hormonal therapy and chemotherapy. I think that was a great breakthrough. It took 10 years. But, but over the course of that time, you know, it read out, maybe eight years, it read out as a, a, a dramatically positive study in favor of that early dose of taxal use. And we see the results positive in terms of a, uh, a greater overall survival for sure, but also a longer time to castration resistance and a greater percentage of patients getting a PSA nadir less than 0.2. These are all really good surrogates to tell us that we're having a deeper and more durable effect on the tumor than just primary ADT alone. So uh, along comes uh, the 2000s and we have abiraterone approval in castration resistant disease that's you know, chemotherapy refractory. It gets studied in the, in the, the chemo-naive setting, but it's also getting started largely in Europe with this same population of metastatic hormone sensitive. And it's important to recognize in Europe that population is even greater. One, because this, this is a, a countries that historically haven't screened very much for prostate cancer. And two, because they're countries where when patients relapse after local therapy, they're more prone to hold on hormonal therapy until metastatic disease is established. So you've got a, just a higher percentage of these metastatic hormone sensitive patients in the urology practices and an opportunity to really accrue well to these studies, and, and they did, they did. L Latitude was a large study that looked at uh, upfront abiraterone uh, versus, with ADT versus ADT alone. Again, treated until castration resistance or unacceptable toxicity. Stampede is a different kind of study. This was more of a rolling uh, study where they added arms to this uh, multi-armed, uh, large, almost registry study through the UK that looked at uh, patients receiving hormonal therapies for metastatic hormone sensitive disease, coupling with everything from zoledronic acid to docetaxel to, to abiraterone. And in that setting, uh, they were able to look at a control arm of ADT alone versus each one of these arms right. uh, separately. So, so those two studies mirrored each other and both of them read out last year, demonstrating a significant survival benefit associated with abiraterone almost uncanny how similar the benefit was to dose of Taxil. But of course, a hormonal therapy pill versus chemotherapy, kind of no, no brainer there for most people to say, you know, this is, you know this, this is the way to go. We're beginning to recognize maybe not all these patients are the same. Maybe there are some patients that drugs like abiraterone are, are, are more than enough to get that benefit. Maybe others we do need to do more like dose of Taxil. Maybe there are some patients that tolerate docetaxel really well. 
So I, I think you know that there's more work to be done in this space, but recognizing it is no longer acceptable to take a patient with metastatic disease at presentation, particularly extensive, more than four metastasis disease at presentation, and treat them with ADT alone. We really need to be considering these other approaches.